In our previous lesson, we learned that stimuli are essentially the raw data of how we experience our world. But as we know, data can be pretty useless without interpretation. Our ability to organize the stimuli, to make connections between them and our prior experiences and expectations is called perception. Just like the process of sensation, the process of perception has its own set of principles. First, let's note that just as is true with sensation, it is possible to achieve perceptual adaptation. Remember, the concept of sensory adaptation is when our bodies become so habituated to a particular stimulus that our sensitivity to that stimulus is reduced. You stop noticing the stimulus because your sensory receptors stop noticing that it's there. This is what happens daily when we just stop noticing the clothes or jewelry that we're wearing. With perceptual adaptation, our bodies, or rather our brains, can learn to filter out distractions once we become habituated to an environment. To be clear, we still notice the stimuli, it still registers. It's just that we can filter it out. For instance, if you're sitting outside with friends, you might notice it's hot at first, but then you get habituated to the heat and filter it out and can focus on the conversation, the food, the fun you're having. Similarly, if you live or work near a noisy place, say a major intersection or near a railroad, you start filtering out that regular noise. You can sleep through the honking or the sound of a train passing by because of perceptual adaptation. With the process of perception though, what's perhaps the more significant concept is that of a perceptual set. Through our lived experiences, we come to expect certain outcomes. It's those experiences that form our perceptual set, our set of mental tendencies and assumptions that affects what we perceive that affect what we're predisposed to perceive. Our perceptual set can influence what we think we've sensed, what we see, what we hear, what we feel, and what we taste. And think about it, doesn't this make sense? Having expectations for the way our environments work allow us to navigate those environments quite easily. Now, given our perceptual set, a given stimulus can trigger different perceptions based on the immediate context surrounding that stimulus. Study this picture for a while and make sure you read the caption. Context effects, including where you're from, help determine how we interpret, how we perceive various stimuli. Our perceptual set and context effects work because our brains tend to organize and interpret information based on cognitive frameworks called schema. We'll explore schema in greater depth during our unit on cognitive psychology. For now, just know that they exist and that these help to inform both our context effects and our perceptual set. For now though, let's look at some examples of context effects. I'm going to flash a set of images for just a few seconds Pay attention. Okay now, without going back and viewing the images again, take a moment to draw the images you just saw. Okay, here are the images again. Compare the actual images on the screen to the ones you drew. Did you remember that the images of these shapes were imperfect? That they're slanted, that none of the shapes is quite closed? Chances are, you didn't. And the reason you didn't is defined by the Gestalt law of prognance. In German, prognance means good figure. Basically, this law states that we tend to perceive objects in their most perfect form. So, we saw these slanted figures, but when asked to reproduce them, we drew the most ideal versions we could manage. A circle, a square, a triangle, probably an equilateral triangle, and an X. Here's another example of context effects. Study these stenciled letters and numbers for a bit. Now, did you notice that the letter B in the first line is exactly the same as the number 13 in the second line? If you didn't catch that, don't feel bad about it. Given the context clues, 
a set of letters in the first line and a set of numbers in the second line, your perceptual set provided you with the most likely interpretation of the stimulus, thanks to context effects. Here's another one. Consider this note. Of course, I've primed you just a bit about what to look for with the previous example of context effects, but let's look at how context effects are evident here. Did you notice that in the first line, the H in the word phone and the B in the word number are the same shape? Did you notice that in the second line, the D in the word code is the same shape as the L in the words please and call? Finally, did you notice that the word is in the first line is the same shape as the number 15 in the second line? If you didn't, again, don't worry about it. Context effects predisposed you to see the word is in the first line, that's included with all words, and a 15 in the second line in the middle of a phone number. As we've seen, and as you'll continue to explore, our perceptions, our top-down processing, is influenced by our expectations, our perceptual set, and by context effects. Our perception is also influenced by our emotions and motivation. For instance, hearing sad music can influence whether people think they hear the word morning, M-O-R-N-I-N-G, or the word morning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. We'll continue to explore perceptual sets and how perceptual bias occurs as a result of emotion or motivation in upcoming units of study.